G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C-Sharp tutorial. This time is a two-part series because it's so big. We're going to be talking about operators. To give you a bit of an introduction to what they are, they are symbols that you use with variables or values that tell the computer to perform certain functions and return you a value. Now, another way of saying that is it's simple things like adding, subtracting, timesing and dividing, and there's lots more than that. So that's why it's a two-part series. In this particular video, we're gonna attack two categories of them. We're gonna talk about arithmetic operators, also known as mathematical operators, pretty simple ones. And the second category we're gonna look at is assignment operators, if I can spell right there. Okay. So before I begin this video, I actually want to create a couple of integers. We're going to put some values in it and we're going to do a little bit of function. So I'm going to go A, uh, we're going to make him 11. We're going to make B, we're going to make him five, just to be simple. And we're going to do some very basic arithmetic operators. Let's do a right line. And I'm going to do my fancy little strings again. And I'm going to make it say 11 plus five equals. And then in brackets, I'm actually, this is where I'm going to perform the mathematical operation because in brackets if I just do this it's actually going to perform that operation and then print that to the screen which is a very handy little thing to do okay so when I run this program I'll quickly put in a read key down the bottom here like so you see we've got the result of 11 plus 5 equals 16 and that sounds pretty yeah pretty bang on now what I'm going to do because we've got a number of operators to perform I want to copy and paste this whole line now you could highlight that. You can then press Control C for your copy, make a new line, Control V to paste. There's a quicker way to do that in Visual Studio, thankfully. If you just put your cursor anywhere on the line without highlighting anything, then press Control C and press Control V, automatically paste the line and moves down one for you. So I can quickly make up four lines. There's my minus, my times, which is an asterisk, and my divide, which is a forward slash, okay? quickly fix these ones here because the other ones are just for show press play and there we go there's the results of all my different arithmetic operators if you want to pause the video just play around with these for a little bit please do so but for right now I wanted to show you a couple more things before I even show you more operators I want to introduce another variable C for the moment in fact I'm going to drop the equals part I was going to do something there but I'm not anymore it's quite important to know that we can actually make C equal the value of one of these arith arithmetic operations. Now, it's even more important to know that you can perform multiple of them and the order of operation in maths does hold here. Now, I'll explain what that means in just a moment. So if I want to go A plus B times C divided by A, okay, we are allowed to do that kind of thing. All right, oh, I'm not allowed to use C there, sorry. I'll just change that to a B. Now what I'm talking about with order of operation is basically it's going to look at the different arithmetic operators that we're using and it's going to perform them in the proper sequence. So times and divides come first and pluses and minuses come after that or additions and subtractions. So this operation here is actually going to be the very first thing performed. So five times five gives us 25 and then it's going to go 25 divided by A, which is going to produce a weird number of 2.2 something something. 2.12 or something like that and then we're going to add a on which is going to be 11 again so we're going to get like 13 or something so i'll print that to the screen just so you can see what i'm talking about i'm going to be a bit cheap here and just print the value of c okay yeah not too bad it's an integer so it's dropped off the actual fractional part that's why you're only seeing 13 but that's fine now i also said order of operation we can actually take control of that as well if i wanted to perform this addition first you can actually put parentheses or brackets around it as well. So that's now going to become the very first operation. If you want the division to be the second thing to occur, you can put brackets around that. So now I've made it so the times is actually going to be the last thing that occurs and it's going to produce a vastly different value. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the moment. I just wanted to bring that up and show that you can use multiple operators in a single thing. So you can create, you can recreate different formulae and you can actually use the order of operation brackets as well. Now let's do the next thing. I'm just gonna quickly comment these out because I don't want them to appear on the screen. The next operator I wanna show you is called modulus. This guy is a percentage symbol. Now, he might look a little bit confusing. I'm just gonna run the program and let you see the result of it at the moment. So 11 modulus five is a one. 
Now, the way that works, a modulus is actually very similar to a division. It actually performs a division. But this division here takes the left value and sees how many of the second value fit. So 11, how many fives fit? Well, in that case, it is two. Now we actually have a value left over there because five fits into 11 twice, but we have a one that is left over. That is the remainder, okay? And that's what the modulus finds out for us. It says, if we divide 11 by five, what is going to be our remainder, okay? In this particular case, it's just simply one. All right, so that's the modulus symbol. Now the next two arithmetic operators, which are pretty quick and easy, are actually going to require a value for C, because I want to use him again. And they're gonna require two lines each. So firstly, let's do this one, which is called increment. Increment simply means take the value and add one. So in this case, I'm taking C, which is three, and adding one, so it's going to be four. Uh, if I was to quickly print that to the screen, you'll see I'm not lying. Again, I'm just gonna cheat and put C. There you go, we see we've got the value of four down there. If I then use the opposite of that one, which is decrement, Okay, which is just a minus minus, you'll see we're back to three. So it's increased it to four and it's decreased it to three. It's just worth noting that this actually changes the value in RAM. Okay, so it's like a permanent change to the value. Now, there's one last operator that some people think of when I'm teaching this kind of stuff. They always ask for this guy. They always ask for the power of symbol. Now, unfortunately, this guy doesn't exist in C Sharp. He's used for something else. But we do have something that we can use. If I just quickly write it down the bottom here, you can't do say A to the power of B, it just doesn't work like that. What you have to do is type math.pow, short for power, and then you have to open up brackets again, specify the first value, put a comma and specify the second value, and there you go. So now I've got A to the power of B in that case. That's a pretty big value as you can see. Those are all of our arithmetic operators to start with, okay? There's probably a few more that I haven't covered, but they're the ones that you should definitely learn because they're the ones you're gonna be using. Now, just pause the video and try those. I wanna go on to the assignment operators. Now, I talked about, in some previous videos, the assignment operator, which I've used plenty of times already. It's this guy here. It's the equal symbol because he assigns a value to a variable, all right? Now, I'm just gonna quickly comment out all this code and I'm gonna do it nice and quick. And you can either do it by pressing this button up here or you can use the shortcuts that you can see, Control E and C. And the way that works is you hold Control, hit E and C, one after the other while holding the Control key. Right? And the next one is the uncomment if you wanna use that. But I just wanted these values, 11, five and three to stay as they are so you know that I'm doing a few things. Let's say I'm just going to use the assignment operator quickly. You can see I'm now changing C to the number six. Pretty straightforward. All right. The next line of code, if I, let's say, didn't want to change the value of, let's say, C, I just want to increase it by one. Obviously, I can use this line here. I can use a different kind of line. I could write C equals C plus one. This would be equivalent to writing the increment arithmetic operator. Another way that I can write all of this, because I'm using C on itself, I'm saying C equals itself plus one value. So in this case, it's going to be six plus one, so seven. All right, if I want to write that quickly, I can actually change this assignment operator to be plus equals. So it means take C and add on one. So that's the exact same thing I just wrote, but in a much shorter fashion. I could use this one up here, but if I wanted to increase it by, let's say, three instead to go to nine, you could use it like that. Now, as you can probably tell, since I'm using a plus here, I can actually use all of my other or arithmetic operators in this case. So I could use a minus, I can use times, I can use divide, I can use a modulus, okay? And each one of these is going to perform the operation on C itself, okay? Let's just narrow it down to just one for the moment and I'll talk through it. So you allocate six to C and then we subtract it by three. So it gets you the value of three. Okay, comment him out. In this case, we're saying six times three. So in that particular case, we've got 18. So that's gonna be the new value of C and so forth and so forth, okay? 
that's basically how these assignment operators work. And these are really, really handy to use a lot of the time, okay? I'd suggest, I'm probably gonna leave it there and cover the rest of the operators in the next video. But I'd suggest have a play around with these, create a ton of variables and just do a ton of things to them. But anyway, thanks very much for watching everybody. Like, subscribe and commenting is down the bottom. Think about doing it for me. But I'll see you in the next video for part two of operators.